Hey, what's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today, I wanted to check out the new Rock 64. They make three models of this, a one gigabyte, a two gigabyte, and a four gigabyte. I got my hands on the two gigabyte version. This is made by the same guys who made the Pine 64, except this thing is a bit more powerful. Let's go over the specs of the Rock 64. For the CPU, we have a Rock chip 3328 quad core ARM Cortex A53. It's a 64 bit CPU running at 1.5 gigahertz. The RAM is DDR3-1600 and you can get it in 1GB, 2GB or 4GB model. There's also an eMMC module socket, micro SD card slot, one USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, gigabit ethernet and IR receiver port, 3.5mm audio video jack, and instead of using a micro USB port for power, it uses a 3.5mm barrel jack. It's 5 volts, 3.5 amps. So you can use an SD card for this, but it's gonna boot a lot faster off an eMMC storage module. I happen to have a 16 gigabyte module that will work with this unit. I'm gonna be running Android in this first video. There are several builds. There's Open Elect, there's some Debian out there, and we also have Android 7.1. I'll be running some benchmarks, testing some video playback, and I'll also test some native Android gameplay, maybe a few emulators. This board supposedly handles video playback at 4K pretty well, so I'm going to leave a link to their website so you can check out the formats it does 4K 60fps in and 4K 30fps in. But before we get started, I wanted to do a little bit of a size comparison here. From the left to the right, we have the Pi Zero W, the Rock 64, the Pi 3, the Odroid C2, the Odroid XU4, and the original Pine 64. So it's right on par with the Raspberry Pi 3, Everything's in the same spot, except it has a barrel jack instead of a micro USB for power. I have the eMMC flashed with Android 7.1, so let's move over there now. Like I said, I'm going to test some benchmarks, some video playback, and some native Android apps. Alright guys, so here we are with the Android build. This is 7.1.2. It's a little weird. It's a mix between Android TV and an Android phone operating system. There's a few things that don't work, like Netflix, uh, 3D Mark, and Asphalt Extreme. It does have the Google Play Store installed. Everything's up to date, but I can't get any of those to launch. We'll go into the settings here. As you can see, it pulls it up on the side. I have seen this before in Android TV boxes using the same chip, so... 7.1.2. I mean, it's a pretty cool setup. I do like the way it feels on a big screen TV. You need a keyboard or I'm using a controller. The system itself is pretty snappy. I mean, switching through apps and things like that. We're going to go ahead and launch Ida64 and just check out the specs real quick. So here we are with the Rock64 by Pine64. It has the RK3328. 2 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. The CPU, Cortex A53 at 1.5 gigahertz. It's a quad core CPU. And the display. The GPU is a Mali 450MP. Now I'm not sure if it's an MP4. I've seen different results all over the internet being an MP2 or an MP4, so I'm not exactly sure. But down at the bottom, it's saying OpenGL ES 2.0, but then right above it, it says OpenGL ES version 3.1. Not really sure what's going on with that either. We'll put that aside for now and see how this board really performs. I ran some benchmarks. First up, I'm going to check Antutu. Now, in all of these tests, I had a small fan on the CPU along with a small heat sink, so it's not throttling. And we scored a 35,211. Not bad, but pretty good for a low-powered rock chip. 3D score, really low compared to some other chips that I've tested. I really wish rock chip would have put a better GPU paired up with this CPU. This is an older Mali MP450. Next up, I ran a Geekbench for the single-core score. We scored a 581. For multi-core score, we scored a 1589. I also tested the Compute benchmark inside of Geekbench, 1155. I did try to run 3D Mark and I couldn't get it to finish. It would have only run Ice Storm Extreme anyway. But one of the main selling points for this board is 4K video playback. We're going to test a little now using the built in RKMC. This is a fork of Kodi that works great with Rock Chip CPUs. 
This did come preloaded with some add-ons and I tested a few out and the streaming works fine. As long as you get a good internet connection, you'll be able to stream whatever anybody's serving you. Since this board does come equipped with one USB 3.0 port, I took a one terabyte USB 3.0 hard drive and loaded up some videos on it. We're gonna test it using the RKMC built-in fork of Kodi here. So I'll go to my videos, files, and I'll find a few videos here. First up, we have Big Buck Bunny. This is the 1080p 60 FPS version. It's MP4. Handles this really good. On the Rockchip site, they do mention 4K video playback very frequently, so we're going to test that now with a 4K 30fps MP4. Big Buck Bunny again. Looks like it handles this 30 FPS 4K video pretty well. Let's move on to a 4K 60 FPS video. Now, a lot of formats are supported with this rock chip and some are not. I will leave a link to their website so you can see what they recommend for 4K 60 FPS playback. This is the same as the last two files, MP4, except it's 4K 60 FPS. You might have noticed a little bit of skipping around. This was not me, and the sound is very off with this 4K 60. We're going to try this. This is 120 megabits a second, 4K UHD H264.mkv. I've watched this on a lot of devices and it seems to be running at full speed with no trouble at all. Let's move on to another 4K video. Same thing here in a different format. Also 4K UHD 120 megabits a second, HEVC 10 bit. And again, it looks like it's handling this pretty well. I have used this on my Shield and tons of PCs, so I can tell you if it's been lagging. It looks really smooth. Next up, we're going to try the built-in YouTube player here. I'm going to go for a 4K video.
I'm going to pause the video here and go to more options. I'm going to turn on some stats for nerds. And I don't see an option to change the resolution. And it's a little weird because inside of the window I just opened up for dimensions, it says 1280 by 720, but the resolution is 1920 by 1080 at 30 FPS. So I can't get 4K video playback through YouTube on this board, but I really don't see any reason why it wouldn't do 720p or 1080 pretty good. This little chip is trucking along. There's no drop frames so far. Who knows, maybe down the road they can support 4K playback on YouTube using this board. You never know. Next up, I'm going to move to Minecraft Pocket Edition. So I just set up a world. I've already been in here. I set up some dynamite also. It does run pretty well. There's a little bit of lag every once in a while. I'm just going to run around a little bit and show you how it performs. So it handles Minecraft Pocket Edition pretty good. I mean, I could turn the chunks down a little bit more and get better performance, but if you're looking to play Minecraft, you know it's not a top of the line 60 FPS game. So I'd say the Rock 64 does a decent job. Last test I wanna do is PlayStation 1 emulation using RetroX. I'm gonna test Bloody Roar 2, see how this performs. All right, so my initial thoughts on the Rock 64 single board computer, it's a decent little board. I'd say it does have more power than the Raspberry Pi 3, but when you're talking about power, you need applications to run. And the Pi 3 definitely has this beat with development. You never know, down the road, the Rock 64 could definitely take off, get some really good developers behind it, and make this thing happen. I will be testing more operating systems in the future, and I'll probably move back to Android after they update it once or twice. But if you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave links to Pine64's website so you can check it out. They're relatively cheap, like 25 bucks for the one gigabyte model, and it goes up from there. If you get the two gigabyte model or the four, it's going to obviously be more. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.